Let's paint some easy yellow armour. These are the knight's armour panels and they need priming. As usual, I'm using Chaos Black Aerosol for my primer. After a few quick blasts in the summer sun, I had all the panels primed and ready to paint. Now, I didn't mention here what I did was attach all those armour panels to old paint pots for ease of handling. I've got one here. Here you go. And if you're wondering, I didn't glue them to these handles. I blue tacked them on. What type of tacker are you? According to international law, primers always have to miss parts of your miniature. So next up, we need some Vallejo model color black. Using this black, I then tidy up any areas the Chaos Black spray missed. It helps to thin the paint a little more than usual for this. When the tidying up is done, we just have to wait for it to dry. I feel like Robert De Niro when I'm waiting, but I'm not talking Italian. Now this is the part I think I struggle with the most. Waiting on paint to dry. Or should it be waiting for paint to dry? What do you guys do while you're waiting for your paint to dry? Did we say paint to dry far too many times there? There were a few panels I couldn't hit with the aerosol that also needed blacking in, notably the knight's head. It was pretty easy to do. There were only a couple of panels on his forehead and cheeks. If I had used the aerosol, I would have ruined the silver paintwork from the previous video, and then what the hell would I do? I would be in some real pretty shit then. Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? We're some real pretty shit now, man! Are you finished? Now, I don't think there's anything that annoys me more than ruining some previous paintwork. The worst is when you do it with your dirty little fingers and they've got a bit of wet paint on there somewhere and you accidentally smear your piece. It's messy. So first we're returning to my wrinkly Vallejo model colour black. I'm still waiting for someone to tell me why my labels are wrinkly. Using my airbrush, I then give some of the panels a black coat. These panels I want black, so I'm going to tackle those first. With the black applied, we have this, the base colour for the black. Now, I repainted over the Chaos Black spray paint with the Vallejo model colour black as they have slightly different finishes. The Vallejo model colour black has a nicer, more matte finish to it. The Chaos Black is a bit more satiny. It's hard to explain, you sort of have to see them in hand, as it were. And also, it will help match any other things I decide to paint black later on. This week, I have mostly been watching Pete the Wargamer. He's made a fantastic video where he converts his Sarastus Knight Lancer. He's done a fantastic job, and you need to go and check it out for yourself, if you get the chance. It's really pushed a great effect, and resulted in the appearance a Look out, it's the return of Basalt Grey. This was a birthday gift from my good friend Bones Minis. Thank you very much because I never did find my original one. Using my airbrush, I'm then going to apply this very sparingly into the centre of the panels that I want to paint black. This is to act as a highlight. When it's all applied, you have this. Now, in real life, it's nowhere near as stark and contrasty. For some reason, the lighting makes it look a lot lighter than it is. Now, you have to be careful when you're highlighting black. It's very easy to make a mistake and go way too light. It ends up looking grey rather than black. Anyway, let's move on to the yellow, shall we? Interestingly, we're not using a yellow paint, but we are using Vallejo model colour pink. I found this to be the best pink for the job. Using my airbrush, I then paint all the panels I want to be yellow with a few light coats of pink. We don't want any of that black showing through. It might have made sense to prime the miniature with grey, but oh well. With all that pink applied, we have this. A lovely pink blancmange knight. Maybe we should call him Sir Blancmange. Now I would like to know, do knights in Warhammer 40,000 get called Sir? I've always called them Sirs. 
Have I been getting that wrong since we started all these night videos? It even goes way back to when I painted that House Orlac night many, many years ago. I painted it quite badly, actually, looking back. Don't go and look at that. Here's a link to it if you want to see it anyway. Also, why is Sir sometimes spelt with an E? And that's a C. I mean an E. I guess I could just Google it. <laughs> well, I couldn't really find out why it's spelt with an E. But what I did find out, which I thought was very interesting, is that knights used to have the K pronounced. Back then it was also spelt with a C. So I was right when I did the C. So that would mean that they would be pronounced knights. I feel we need to bring that back. Next up, it's Vallejo Model Color White. Using my airbrush, I then hit the center of the panels with the white, leaving the pink around the edges, next to the recesses where the trim is. This is a really fun step, and it's sort of hard to mess it up. Here's an example of a completed panel. For some reason, my camera struggled with focusing on this. I think it's because the white is just too bright for it. You can see all the little pink fades around the edge of each panel. It's rather pleasing to the eye. Now there's loads of different ways of getting your transitional effects with an airbrush. Another way is to fade it out towards the edges of the panels instead of the centers. It all comes down to what you prefer yourself, really. It's all very subjective. I felt with this miniature, this was the method that would work the best. Feel free to disagree if you wish. Okay, let's do some magic. We're now using Citadel Imperial Fist contrast paint. With the airbrush, I'm using this neat by the way, I then cover the entire panels with the yellow. It's important to get good coverage here so the pink or white don't show up in patches somewhere. Here's an example of a completed panel. You can see the transitional fade underneath that yellow, giving us a lovely shaded effect. We have no nasty tide marks, and I think it looks pretty damn good. This is the first time I've tried the pillow method with an airbrush. Pillow being an amalgamation of pink and yellow. Now in the flesh, the yellow is considerably more vibrant than it appears in that footage. The yellow still doesn't seem right on the camera footage here. It's bizarre, I wonder why that is. If there's any camera experts out there that can tell us why, then please let us all know. I'd be very interested to know why. Anyway, when it comes to painting yellow with this method, it would be an absolute piece of piss to paint Imperial Fists with it. If you tried it, you'd be laughing. I guess the clue is in the name of the paint really, isn't it? Imperial Fists contrast paint. Anyway, next up, Flames. On a side note, that's actually the name of a local kebab shop near me. Okay, to start with, I want my Vallejo model colour black again. Using the black, which has been thinned quite a fair bit, I then paint on some wiggly flame patterns. The reference material I used was some images of Legio Furians, who are mates with the night house I'm doing, House Perdaxia. I say mates, I think there's a proper term for it. It took a little while to paint all those black flames, but we got there in the end. Sadly, some are a little untidy, but this is my first time doing freehand flames, so we should improve going forward, if we ever return to this scheme. What do you guys reckon? Would you like to see some more? Now, when the new version of Epic is out, I'm planning on doing the Titans as Legio Furians in this same paint scheme manner. So this is almost a training run for those. But I do much prefer the Legio name Tiger Eyes as opposed to Legio Furians because that just seems hard to say. Furians, Furians, Legio Furries. Tiger Eyes is a lot better, isn't it? Next up, I'm going to use a little Vallejo model color, German Grey. Using the German grey, I then tidy up my flames and work it as an almost highlight, painting inside the centre of the black flames. With the subtle highlight colour applied, all the flames were finished. I painted them on most of the panels, apart from the black ones. Now, in hindsight, the hind is over there, I feel maybe I should have just left a couple of those panels yellow 
without the flames on them. Just to have a little more variation over the night. I mean, I've got the black panels, but I think maybe just some yellow blank ones would have gone a long way to add a little more variation in there. Variation is the spice of life, they say. No, variety is the spice of life. Where did I hear that? Is that an Orson Welles quote? Let's decide at the end together if we feel we should have had some uh, blank panels on there. Anyway, it's done now. We need to move forwards. If you want to get your hands on your own Serastus Knight Lancer kit and hopefully paint it right first time, then check out the little link up here somewhere. I'll also sling one down in the description below for you. Now we do have a small problem here. Some armour panels I want to be yellow are built into other parts, like these toes here. There are others on the weapons, and we're going to have to do these by hand. These will be the colours of choice. I'm going to follow the same method for painting by hand as I did with my old hammer Bad Moon Hawk video, which you can see here. That took a lot longer than expected than with the airbrush, and I can tell you that for free. So going forward, I think I'm going to make sure everything yellow gets done first with the airbrush on future models. It's also a lot less tidy with the hand. Now luckily, we still have all the weathering and oils to do on this miniature, which should hide a multitude of sins. Now if you do want to come and chat to us about the seven deadly sins or anything else Warhammer related, then please feel free to join us on our local friendly Discord server. There's a little link up here somewhere, and again I'll put one down in the description below. By the way, I don't believe in paywalls and it is free. We look forward to chatting to you there soon. Now a few days ago, Snakeworks Jr. and I found a weird musical mirror with a hammer attached to it. I'm not sure what it was for, but Snakeworks Jr. enjoyed it immensely. Although I was a little worried, he was going to hit me with the hammer. Carefully go smash me in the face. Right next up, it's the trim. To paint the trim, I'm starting with Retributor Gold. I like this gold as it's gold, unlike a lot of other alleged golds. I then give all the trim a thinned coat of the Retributor Gold. I had to be extra careful handling the panels as that yellow paint seemed a little fragile. And while I put my paints away, I just want to give a massive shout out and thanks to all my Patreons and channel members. Dan Yallop, Lee Blackley, Donald, Pine Tree, Bobzilla, Charles Marlowe, Andrew Marrington and Dr. Lee. Thank you all so, so much for helping me keep this channel going. I love you all. Now, does anyone enjoy painting trim on their armor panels? Is there a fast and easy way to do it? If so, then please let me know for future reference. There is something I do need to show you. On the edge of the oval knight base here, there's some embossed writing and it says, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you, Sam. If you are enjoying the content here on the channel, then please consider joining us on Patreon. The link to which is in the description below and up here somewhere. Now, without further ado, let's check out the finished yellow armor, shall we? So here's where we are up to. Now I couldn't carry on with the trim, as next I need to gloss the panels for decals and weathering. Then I will have to match them back down, and I think that might ruin the gold on the trim, so I'm going to leave them with just the first coat until we can get those sections done. I am really happy with how the yellow and flames have turned out, and I cannot wait until we can put these panels on the night. Exciting times indeed. If you want to see more Horus Heresy videos, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. And as always, thank you very much for watching. It's quite warm today.